Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to Exploring Economic Development with MEDC. We are here for episode 16, and we have a really fun and exciting guest today, Councillor Christian Dumas, with us. Uh, the last time we saw you, we had Kevin Kiros from the Mass Office of Business Development to talk about state incentives, programs, things that they have available for small business owners, big business owners, really any type of business that's in Massachusetts. That was a really informative and great episode, but today we're going to talk a little bit more about small business in particular here in Marlboro. Um, Jill, we have a new segment to share this week, right? We do. But I welcome. Good morning. Good morning, Meredith. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to forget to say good morning no to my worries. wonderful co-host. I'm, I'm so excited. It's fall weather. It's sweater weather. It's sweater weather. I'm excited about the fall. I'm excited about episode 16. Me too. And our special guest. Yeah. I w we were saying right before we went live that I think we're the most excited about Christian because he is really excited to be here with us, yeah. which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we love that kind of energy. We so. Will. We do have a new segment, though, that we, we want to jump into, right, before yes. we get started? and right before we do that, if you're joining us live on Facebook and YouTube, please let us know. Write us a little comment so we know that you're watching. We if need you have to any, know. any questions, anything you want us to clarify or review, or mm -hmm. you just want to say hi and say hi, <laughs> do it. Or if you're watching on WMCT. On the replay, on the replay. we're going to be posting this through WMCT, our local cable access channel. They're doing such, a, I'm really super impressed with all of the work that they've been doing lately. Really awesome. great business highlights. They, they just put out a really great video of the food truck, which we're going to talk about here in a minute. Yep. Um, just, so great work there. So hi, our email and our phone number are down below. So reach out to us, Connect. send us an email if you have any questions or any ideas for future episodes or people we should bring on. Let us know. Let us know. We want to know. Yes. All right. So... Yeah, we so talked a little bit about episode fifteen. Yeah, we're, so we're gonna call, we want to do we want to try to come to you guys with a little bit of a kind of an in case you missed it, what's been going on in Marlboro. Yes. If you have not seen, we do a city happenings newsletter uh, bi monthly, but we're gonna start trying to when we come to you here on the podcast, just give you a little recap of what's been going on in Marlboro in between episodes. Yeah. Um, so in case you missed it, the last episode we had was with Kevin Kiros from Mass Office of Business Development. Really great informative episode. It, just a lot of information. Um, we had a lot of links that we put on after for yes. people to go and check out but if you didn't see that episode and you're a business owner in Marlboro or you're looking to locate in Marlboro um, I mean really in Massachusetts but we in Marlboro Marlboro, Marlboro. <laughs> you should check out this episode because <laughs> there's a lot of great information and then last week mm -hmm. oh yeah we had a really special edition of exploring economic development we call it inside the industry yes um, we had members from the hospital Marlboro Hospital um, the imaging center in particular Gr another just really yeah. great conversation uh super we talked informative. to yeah super yeah. informative it was uh breast cancer we were just coming into breast cancer awareness month um wonderful conversation uh with diane and dr gopal um so you should definitely check that one out as well out for sure yes absolutely and then i can't believe it i mean it feels like it was forever ago because it was such a hot beautiful day beautiful and day. now it's getting cold here in, in massachusetts but we just had our food, food truck, truck festival, festival. Shout out to Lindsay Jowrick, Lindsay. Linda Martins, my team Jill. Everybody did such an amazing job for the Food Truck Festival, the DPW, the mayor's office, Ryan. I mean, just a really amazing community event. If you weren't there, check out the highlights because it was a day to be out in yes. Marlboro. We had touch a truck. We had live music. We had vendors. We had obviously food trucks, but yeah. a beer and cocktail garden where people were just, it, it was just so much fun. Thousands of people. I think we had about 5,000 people there. It was awesome. It was incredible. The weather, I mean, we couldn't have ordered a better day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Ryan Sunburn can testify <laughs> to, that. to that. Yeah, we had some great vendors there yeah. selling awesome things. Arts the and crafts. food was delicious. Well, and I think the, the unique thing about it this year, we had done the Food Truck Festival a couple years ago. But yeah. this time, we got a grant from the Mass Cultural Council, and we were able to bring the arts to the festival, which was just a game changer. Yeah. It was really cool. Yeah. Really, really cool. And then I... I think the last thing we want to make sure we shout out is the shuttle bus. Shuttle bus. So if you are a commuter that works in Marlboro or you are a Marlboro resident that works in Boston or Worcester, um, the shuttle bus is back. Yep. So if you're looking for a free ride, 
um, to the Southboro train station to, to catch the train into Boston or catch the train from Boston into Marlboro. Yep. Or if you're looking to go to Worcester or from Worcester to Marlboro. Six trips a day, There's right? Six trips three a day. Three in the morning. And three in the evening. Yeah. Um, this really is to try and close that last mile gap. You know, if people are working at the different office parks in, in um, what we call the Southwest Quadrant or at the Apex or across the street at the RK Plaza, this is a great option yes. uh, for you to, to get to and from work. And again, it is free. So yes. check out our website. You can register a spot, um, reserve mm -hmm. a spot on the bus. It's 12 passenger handicap accessible van so we're excited for that to be back yeah. and then during the uh, daytime when it's not being used for commuters it's used for by the senior center that's awesome so really great um, service really taking advantage of that opportunity so at the very end of this uh, live video podcast the very very end stay tuned we have a little promo video for the shuttle bus so you can catch that it's only like a minute long but it'll tell you everything you need, everything to, know you need and, to know and show you where the pickups are and whatnot and so yeah take advantage of that and make sure you share that with anyone that might be able to take advantage of that absolutely yeah yeah so with that i think that's in case you missed it yeah city happenings what's been going on uh, we're going to jump into today's episode and give a warm welcome to city councilor and small business owner <laughs> Kristen Dumas, thanks Thank for joining you. us this morning. Like you said, it's, I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, yeah we're, is, we're pumped to have you. Well, great. <laughs> I'm pumped <laughs> to be here, yeah. It's yeah. awesome. It's, no. de it's definitely something to look forward to on my calendar. To yeah. Say it breaks up things, well, especially on a Wednesday. On yeah. a Wednesday. <clears throat> we can yeah, brighten our Wednesday. Wednesday. Hopefully, we'll brighten yours as well. All the time. Absolutely. I watch everything. And you I watch, watch the episodes. I do watch the episodes. That's yes. wonderful. Yes. yes. It's, 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 it's a lot of tidbits of information, yeah. which is nice. And we want a lot of different information, right? That's what we're trying to do these days. Right. And I think we're talking about this earlier. You get to see a different side of the people that are on it. Yeah, you know, right. So yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, it was we'll in good company. We'll but. see a lot of sides of you today. We're excited about that. <laughs> I'm actually pretty one-dimensional. So this, <laughs> is, this is all you get. This is it. Yeah. That's awesome. So Marlboro, yeah. lifelong Marlboro resident. Uh, I have ventured out, but yes. But you came but back, I, right? did, I did come back. You came you back. You always come back to your roots, apparently. <laughs> yeah. So yes. tell us about yourself. So you're not only... Marlboro, born and raised. You Correct. flew the coop for a little while, came yep. back, small business mm -hmm. owner, city mm -hmm. councilor. Yeah. Tell us about yourself. How did you get to where you are and uh, why do you love Marlboro? <laughs> yeah. um, I, you know, living in other places, smaller cities, bigger cities, it's, it's Marlboro has such a unique feel. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the the old school townies are so deeply rooted. <laughs> and Isn't that the, the truth? There's such a <laughs> sense of pride with mm -hmm. that and now to see so many different transplant people who want to see that and, and so engaged in the small businesses and the restaurants and things like right. that so um it's a pretty impressive place to be mm -hmm. um you know even you're so close to boston but yet still far enough you know like yep. it, it just adds so much different elements and layers to different things um i never thought that i would be living in marlboro for the uh, my rest of my life you know like <laughs> you, you know you always want to venture off and right and, and, and fl leave the coop but so um, where did you go in between um i lived in san francisco just before no the kidding. shop uh the salon opened up so i was there for two years um love brought me there and yeah um, the, during the construction of the salon is when i was living there so mm -hmm. i was actually working at fidelity investments no kidding and, yeah so i've so it was, and it was great. So I was working in retail management. I just, the whole nights and weekends, which I work nights and weekends now, I just didn't yeah. like it with retail management. So Fidelity popped up and um, mm -hmm. I took that job. So I got to come home on lunch breaks and, you know, yep. eat lunch and then go right back. And then my job was moved to Texas. Oh, wow. So that's when the idea of the shop was coming to come together and, um, it took two years of construction to build the salon. So well, that's an interesting tidbit because I think sometimes people, and we'll get into small business a little bit and how you yeah. got there, but people don't realize how long it can take for a small business Correct. to get up and running. And um, I wasn't actually even involved in that process. So mm -hmm. my dad and my brother did a lot of the work themselves to yeah. reconstruct. I, I mean, the salon is massive. It's like 25,000 square feet. Beautiful. It's two stories. Like it's just, it's not your typical hair salon. Yeah. So um, during that construction, I was in San Francisco. And then once we opened, I moved back. And mm -hmm. I was only supposed to be there for two to three years mm -hmm. just to get the business up and running and then and figure out what went. I wanted to do with my own life, you yeah. know, because I was just 30. So it was just wow. like, okay, yeah. So it's been a very long road, you know. Yeah. So a year into it, my brother was going to do the hair. I was going to do the back of the business and just kind of manage you know get things up and running but like it was right. just a shell of a business like there was wow. nothing like so so we've been trying to figure out 
Dr- the name. Dr- yeah. Dr- <laughs> yes. Where did that come from? So since my brother was going to be the main stylist, his name is Drew and our last oh, name. Okay. So he combined the two. So, okay. um, which is great because like if telemarketers call, they ask for Drew. I'm like, sorry, wrong number. So <laughs> it kind of <laughs> filters things out pretty quickly, which is kind of Makes nice. it easy. <laughs> but people always think that my last name is Drew Drew Mays. I'm like, yeah. it's not, you know, and yeah. people are like, oh, so, and I even pronounce my name Dumas because I'm not that fancy, you know, yeah. like I don't speak French. So it's just Dumas. You know? So what's like, the correct so, pronunciation? Uh, Dume is the French. Dume. Dume, yeah. Dume. So I'm like, it's Dumas. It's fine. <laughs> it's like, let's not get ahead of ourselves. It's so, so speaking yeah. a little bit of Portuguese, <clears throat> yeah, I thought w- when driving by your salon before yep. I made the connection with who you are, sure, I thought it was a Brazilian hair salon. Oh, because M A I S is mais, which means more. Ah, so I so more I drew, by, yeah, more, more drew, more drew. More drew. My mice brother drew. would love that. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I can't get it out of him. So, right? <laughs> so I, I, yeah, I thought that. But Interesting. I'm glad to hear about the connection. Yeah. Yeah. And That's I think awesome. the M was capitalized because it was a, it separates the difference between our first name and our, and our last name. Yeah. So right. I think that was just right. a yeah. spin on the actual yeah. name. But That's cool. Um, so yeah, so then starting the business, it was just, like I said, it was just a very long process. Because like yeah. the website, the menu, the pricing, so like many literally there. everything that you need. And I did not have a clientele. I wasn't even doing hair then. Yeah. Um, wow. So then a year into it, my brother left and then I went to cosmetology school okay. and ran the business at the same time. So that wow. was like 13 months of my life. Of that you'll literally, never, you'll never sl- get back. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And I won't get back the last 11 years, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm going to know. But, but um, no, you know, it, it, I just felt that hiring people and if I can do a haircut in an hour, yeah. then my staff should be as well. And I yeah. think it, I gained a lot of respect in that regard because mm-hmm. I'm not just like the owner that tells people what to do it was like yeah. no i can jump in and i have and help with shampooing or blow drying or yeah. like you know rattling off formulas for different hair colors and things like that or, or just kind of setting that tone mm-hmm. you know because there's some owners that just don't and right. i'm like to be actively involved it was a good thing because like when we first opened we had such a large space and like two yeah. stylists and it was like empty so it was You're like, like per- okay <clears throat> we, we need to figure this what out what do you do yeah. yeah so it was just my personal mission to talk to every single client that that's came awesome. in you know yeah. just because and i never said who i was like it, yeah that didn't i ma- wouldn't have known that who didn't you were matter when i got my hair done there right yeah. and and i like that because, because you're helping you're filling you're seeing a need and filling a need and, yeah it sets a tone of like the actual teamwork yeah. you know mm-hmm. so plus i hate being the owner like i hate that like oh it's stuffiness and you yeah. just don't get that right where where we are thankfully like there's no gossip there's no cattiness yeah. you know like it's there's no tension when you walk in it's yeah. just a very different atmosphere it's just being such a large space it right. still feels hopefully you felt that warmth yeah that and that was kind of the mission and when you first came in of, my, of like this is who i am this is all I have take to bring to the it. table and take it or leave it. You know, yeah. I think the first like five to seven years, you, we spent so much time trying to accommodate everyone and yeah. everyone. And that's when I just got burnt out. And I'm sure. like, you know, like I have to set a tone. I'm like, this is it. Like, yeah. I don't want to come in seven days a week. Right. <laughs> like, right. You know, yeah. it, because like you kind of have to because those bills coming in. But because there was a lot of overhead. But at the same time, they're like. I'm burning myself out. Yeah. And if I'm not Which is here, not good for anybody. Then no one's going to be here. Well, and I, and know, I think but. at the beginning, too, I mean, a lot of small business owners, they go through this type of thing, right, where boots on the ground, you're you're highly involved. And, you know, right. we, we talk to folks. We've got Patricia Murray right now who's trying to open Dancing Soap Works. Yeah. She has right. a location that was over <clears throat> on Hosmer Street moving right. down to downtown. I can't tell you how many times we've said, coming soon, or it's happening, it's coming. And it is, but it just takes time. Yeah, It does and, take time. You know, you run into issues that you weren't expecting or things come up or, or whatever it is. It takes time to open a small business. And um, I don't think sometimes people want, you know, recognize or, or appreciate how much time goes into it. Right. And, and to be honest, no one wants to hear that either. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, just, and, they, and rightfully so. Like, I don't want to hear what your problems are. Just right. in her case, get me the soap. Get or, me the soap. You know, <laughs> and, or get me my haircut. I need like, the soap. What's the matter? I'm like, well, I literally just worked 15 hours a day. Right. I had like 15 clients. Like, I'm sorry, I'm tired. Right. You know, like, right. I am still a human being. And people right. kind of forget that, you know. Yeah. And, and people always ask me, like, oh my God, do you live here? Like, it's so great. And I'm like, no. No. <laughs> and, people, and literally be like, my, I think I had like this horrible look on my face. Like, how dare you ask me that question? Because they're always like, what do you mean? And then I asked them, like, well, do you live, do you live where, where you, you work? work? You know, right, and this right. was back with COVID when people didn't work at all. Right. And then they'll give me the same look. I'm like, exactly. exactly like, yeah. no, like, 
granted how nice it is, but like it's nice because I set that tone right. yeah. so you to be here. And I'm like, I need to disengage right. so I can continue to come in here and actually enjoy what well, I it's do. Important. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I think people for, seem to forget that right. because they're only there for a very small snippet of time right. and they don't get all the back all of the background. work. I'm like, no, like I yeah. do laundry here and I clean and I do this and I do right. that. And but so I want to clock out at have, the end of the day. Right. Yeah. Because this, all this work is for you so you can have that experience. Right. But I need to have my own experience, experience where I lock the door. <laughs> Grant, I'm still thinking about it. The emails still come in, but right. I'm not you, you mentally need to allow yourself there. To mentally you know? And I think that's what people don't understand. Yeah. They just assume that, like, oh, you must be here all the time. Like, yeah, but I don't want to be. Right, right. <laughs> you know? So how did you, wicked <clears throat> interesting story. So working in Fidelity, yeah. how did you make the switch? Was it, was it kind of like the opportunity presented itself and, okay, I'm going to do this? Or did you have a passion for hair, or did you develop no. the passion for hair? I still, to be completely honest, I still don't think I have the passion for really? hair. Yeah. So, I we were talking about this earlier. I love human behavior. So yeah. just the being able to implement a, a warm, comfortable atmosphere where I get to talk one on one with people, and and even in now as a city councilor, like hair salons, you always get a good pulse of the community. <laughs> <That is laughs> you, you know, so you get to hear the scuttlebutt of like what's going on Absolutely. and people's complaining or you know questions. And I can't tell you how many questions I feel sure. because I'm there. You yeah. know, and people seem to know. And the beautiful thing about the hair salon world is people talk and yeah. like so I don't introduce myself or like oh that's the owner and like right. when you're sitting with someone as a stylist and a client you have to engage in conversation like right. you just do right. so right. I always seem to be the topic of conversation <laughs> <laughs> so I hear For conversations happening about my personal life about this and that yeah. and some it's true some it's not a little fabricated whatever I'm not whatever. gonna be like, like sorry that's incorrect right. Right. <laughs> you're talking about <laughs> me you're like, right yeah um so People seem to know, like, yeah. my life. And, and that's fine. Like, in a world like that, you have to share yeah. because you're you expected have to, be to share back. Yeah. You know, like, I can't tell you how many countless personal stories I've been told from coming out to weddings to mm -hmm. deaths to babies mm -hmm. to whatever. You know, like, you want to share the news. Right. Yeah. You know, we do know secrets, you right. know, and I forget them all, which is a good thing. But, but so <laughs> it's good to know. <laughs> yes, <right? laughs> yeah. I can only speak for myself. I don't know what your own person said, but I send because, but again, it's like, and I do take notes of people's conversations that I have because to, and I will be honest, because to remember six to eight weeks or if you get right. your haircut four times a year, mm -hmm. like I'm not going to remember you from three months ago, four months ago. So I right. do kind of take notes of like mm -hmm. what they are, who they're about, just for that personal, personal connection. connection. Yeah. Well, it's huge but, in small business, right? Because you're building a clientele and you want to make sure that people come back. And I wouldn't be opened if it wasn't for that. Right. You know, I think the best thing about it, not doing hair for the first year or two, is because I was able to engage in every single client that came in. Yeah. You know, and I think a true testament to that, and I will um, shout out to Allison Cox with Word on the Street. Love like, her. she's been a client for us since we pretty much opened. Wow. So just to see her grow with all her different jobs oh, yeah. and then and then with the Word on the Street. like so I. Awesome. Literally, I'm the biggest cheerleader for her because she is the nice. Her kids are great. Her yeah. husband's wonderful. Like, I cut their kids' hair. You know, like. Another small business owner. And then another small business. Right. Yeah. So to see her, especially during such difficult times with COVID and her, to like, I'm doing it. And I'm like, yes, yeah. what do you need? I you know. know? And, people were shocked and, to see a small business open on Main Street in downtown, especially such a like you know forward facing you need to be able to go in but she is doing such a great job yes. my kids really love, is. love going to and, Street. Yeah. and i think it's a true testament to who she is too yeah. you know yeah. because she is the kindest woman and she's so appreciative and you can see mm -hmm. that in her yeah. face you know and, and just talking with her and you're like you know what in this in the community of marlboro itself yeah i yeah i I would hope to think that she would work other where uh, other communities, but there's something truly something special about, about Marlboro. Marlboro. Like you know, so personal story. Like I, my Facebook was hacked like two months ago, it's so I worst. lost. Yeah, so you guys can. So Ugh. I lost everything. Like my my whole. So like the memories and this and that. And so there's no one you can contact. There's no one. <laughs> that is so, the opposite of small <clears throat> business. There is nobody you can contact. And and I think that's the most infuriating thing because you have all these contacts and like friends that you've never really met but you talk to and then yeah. like messenger and like everything is now gone. Like gone. pictures, memories, everything. Which is kind of it was a good thing to kind of like clear Refresh, things out, right. you know. I'm like, oh, you know, like who are you? But <laughs> uh, but at the same time, though, like it was important for me to get back on on some level right. because. 
all the Facebook pages of Marlboro and, and yep. the, the community support, even from a small business standpoint, but also city council, like you get to f- see like what's going on, who's saying what and mm-hmm. how factual it is. Or like, you right. know, I've, there's been issues that have come up that I was able to notify behind the scenes and things mm. like that, you know. So it was inf- so whether you like Facebook or not yep. or social media, like you, right. it's a, so ingrained in our life to get information. Well, so that's but, a really good point. So how what? What role does social media play in your small business, right? I mean, does that, are you guys fielding, I would imagine, you know, there, there's the naysayers out there. There's the people mm-hmm. that, you know, put bad reviews and how much does that impact your your bottom line, your top, like, you know, That's that kind of question. thing. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, our reviews are pretty great. Pretty good. Yeah. There you go. Um, so, and again, I don't know how that happened. Like it just. Because you're doing a good job. Uh, well, and I'm going to put your website um, up on the screen real here, real quick here for everyone to see. And I think social media definitely plays into the fact because mm-hmm. so many new apartments and complexes and people moving to the area. So when yeah, Google search, people find yeah. us, which is fantastic. And I have a great stylist who was actually at the Food Truck Festival, yep. uh, Beauty by Rue. She does yeah. little styles and stuff. And I, Jill, you saw her. She does a lot of instagram and things like that for us which i'm yeah. very indebted for because uh, again she somewhat made this cute little very this yes skirt, she did yes clutch handle oh cool yeah. um <laughs> so growing up in a world without social media because yeah. i think i've just missed that cusp yeah. you know like mm. i i was very like resistant towards it in yeah. the beginning but seeing how it can improve really or even you. just from an information standpoint like mm-hmm. it's Literally nowadays, if you open it, again, we've been open for 11 years now, so that we kind of have that nice cult following. Right. Knock on wood. Um, but not knock on wood. But I not knock on wood. But I can't have sold. Do not it'll bang affect the, the sound Correct. for the audience. So, which we're going to get to some comments well, right. here in a minute. So we'll, we'll knock on my head. No. So, um, <laughs> but if you do have social media now, and even just the residents of Marlboro and different mm-hmm. Facebook groups, and I going back to Allison, like the, just the outward of support, yeah. you know, yeah. just uh, that's like any bit restaurant that opens up people critique and and i will say for any small business like if you go give them a second third chance just yeah, because yeah. sometimes things are bad days you yeah. know like yeah. That's a good again point. we are human and you know there's some place i'm like all right you know i just didn't really like it but right. especially now everything's so difficult with like staffing and, and hours and everyone's stretched so right. thin it's it's tough it's like tough. It, it's tough you know like and i can't imagine starting out now just because like you have to literally work 10 times harder yeah. <laughs> because of the situation of yeah. life that we're yeah. in the well, midst of so i i yeah. that is one of the topics i want to get into is there comments though i don't yes, want to there are so once let's get the comments but yes. then i want to come back to sure. what challenges are you facing right now you know covid but then i mean beyond covid there's so many challenges that a small business owner will face so i want to touch on yeah. that but let's get to some comments too yeah so we first i want to say hi to a bunch of people that are joining us <laughs> right from the very beginning one of our favorite guests. Let me guess, Spencer. Spencer always Spencer. Yeah, always Spencer. I love, I love Spencer. Spencer is awesome. Yeah. So he said, that's my ward counselor and my favorite <laughs> podcast. What a great morning for Spencer. This is your, this is <laughs> your best day. His, you know, worlds, you're are welcome, col- his worlds are colliding. Right you're now. welcome. <laughs> and he said that he's glad that we liked his food truck video. We did love we your really food truck really did. video. Yes. Um, my yeah. friend, uh, Laquisha, who has a great YouTube channel, Blind Guy, his wife, their life. She uh, joined us on a on, on many of our other podcasts. Thank awesome. you so much Thanks for, being for being here. here with Hello us. to you and your husband. Um, Christina says that she's watching here from Marlboro. Hi, um, hi, Christina. And Darlene says that you're a great businessman. Oh, all right, excellent. You got oh, a little Darlene shout Trainer. Out. Yeah. So we I love Darlene out. Trainer. She's fantastic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then we've got another comment. And sorry, sorry guys, we're we're just we're on a roll. We're enjoying the company so much. So I'm going to try to be better about integrating your comments. So keep. Keep joining the conversation. I promise we'll integrate. Love Katrina. Katrina is an MEDC board member. She is nice. with Synovian, uh, wonderful business person in Marlboro. She does a lot of state and federal um, federal work. So thrilled to have you with us this morning, Katrina. Thanks for joining us. Awesome. That's awesome. And then we've got one question before we go on to <coughs> our next part here. So Christina's awesome. asking, did any local organizations assist you with setting up the business? And what advice would you give to someone wanting to open up a first uh, small business here in the city of Marlboro? That's a great question. Um, so starting things off, you just kind of, for me personally, it was just kind of like lost. So I was, <laughs> I did a lot of things and I was very much a type A personality when we first opened up and you don't want to give up that control so soon. So I learned to kind of let go a lot over the sure. years, but I will say, um, the chamber of commerce was so instrumental. Yeah. Um, not only just for like connections, but also for, um, 
self-esteem yeah you know like building your confidence totally like just building that connection and at the time suzanne was a was there and she was literally took me underneath her wing and just kind of showed me the ropes and um you have to hustle you know and i don't mean that like oh like the connections and like networking is a full-time job in itself you know so um thankfully we had a large enough space so we can put on events and things like that so that kind of worked in my favor but if you mm. can put on an event in your small business or or just to get people in sure just yeah. to see get you in, know in the door and then they're a captivated audience mm-hmm. you know and i That's think awesome. that really helped and kind of set a tone yeah. um i think with the shop our building dates back to 1869 so oh. showcasing that like it was original shoe factory so i want like, to show <clears> some <throat> before and after pictures because you sent some over to us so wow. Half wow. of the half of the hardwood floor is actually original to the building, and where the wow. the flooring where the chairs are actually came from another building in Marlboro. No kidding. The lights um, that are in the building they came from St. Mary's Church, which oh, is cool. now uh, my grandparents were married in that church. They did wow. their fiftieth wedding awesome. anniversary church. Like the beams are original. Um, Look at there. There's a better shot so, there, right? Um, so we took a lot of I, I say we my family took a lot of pride in restoring a lot of. Yeah. things and like we were thinking Marlboro way back you know right. so a lot of things were actually recycled from other businesses um, the flooring was re- awesome. repurposed to build out the station so um, there was a lot of labor of love that went into that so it actually was two stories and we cut out the floor to make it more of a loft style um, so there's just like that sense of pride that went yeah. into the building uh, I know that and you a lot can of support now, from your family right 100 percent yeah 100 percent. so my my support network my yeah. dad and my brother did a lot of work my mom will answer the phones you know so it's Mm -hmm. definitely like all hands on deck right and you have to be you know and and the beautiful thing is when you do open that it's funny because like now with COVID, I kind of shifted gears. I've been in a massage therapy program for the last year. No so um, we have the space for it. It was an area of the business that wasn't getting a lot of revenue, and it's something that I've always wanted to do. And so now being in a class of eight and having my own business, like, oh, what advice can you give, you know, right. yeah. starting out? And it's – I received more support from people that I, that I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> and to that's me, cool. that's always fascinating. So, like, if you're banking on friends and family – get that out of your head because yeah. mm-hmm. I've had family that still haven't been to my shop yeah. which is fine because like the different areas and stuff like that sure. no it's no judgment but like you right, can't yeah. hold on to that resentment if someone does not want to support right. you right you, you have to take into the fact of the people that are supporting, that are supporting you, you. Focus and on the positive. I think that was such a huge lesson for me to learn that like just because they're your friends or family doesn't mean that they're going to throw money your way right. you know and, right. and I think that for me was a huge Shift. wake up call like mm-hmm. oh you have to do it yourself like you have mm-hmm. to rely on yourself to do that right. and then appreciate the people that do and once you figure that out that, and once you figure that out like I literally still have goosebumps when people want a gift card for their birthday or Christmas because it's like why That's like because awesome. like when you think of Christmas or birthday like oh you can get anything you know like yeah why do you want to come here? like for me like I still can't wrap my brain or like why yeah. here? you know like that I think they call that humble right it's Stupidity? Maybe a little bit of all yeah, um, But I, I, I'm just honored that people yeah. want to get a gift card or come and yeah. you, you know, or, or they. But don't ever lose mm. that. I think that's such a, an important part of being a small business owner and keeping that integrity of you know wanting it to be this community place, and it, that, that's just awesome. It, it, it's great. I mean, it's yeah. great for the, my bottom line at the end of the day, you know, but yeah. it, but I don't even think of that. Like, I think right. I'm probably like the worst business because I don't think of my bottom line. <laughs> I probably should a little bit more. I probably have a little bit more money in my own personal <laughs> account, but I don't care about that because like, I'm not afraid to work. Yeah. You know, like on a side note, like I literally folded underwear at Victoria's Secret from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. when we were open, when we first opened up because yeah. like it worked with my schedule. I had the retail manager experience. Why not? I didn't have to deal with customers. Yeah. I can just come in and go. Yeah. And I need an income, you know. Yeah. So thankfully, like, and I have this at my station, if you, um, like, the company Pink that Victoria's Secret, they have little dogs, yep. you know, like their stuff. I have one because like they hit a milestone. So yeah. all the employees, I have that at my station. A reminder. As That's a reminder great. that like, I'm not afraid to clean toilets or fold underwear literally like at yep. six o'clock in the morning because like you do whatever you can you to, to survive, you know? And I think people That's don't realize, message. people don't realize that, Listen. you know, like <laughs> yeah. as a small business owner, like you have to have another income like yeah. you know and i think i tell that to my classmates i'm like don't quit your day job yet right right it took me for 
forever. Well, what a cool thing that you're, up, you're still you know? willing to, to to be learning. I mean, I'm sure that it's constant education and learning the new trends and, and keeping up with that stuff. I mean, that that in and of itself is a huge undertaking too, right? I mean, going to classes. And, yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, with hair, you have to st- you have to stay current in the, tra- the trends. Like someone told me, like they wanted a shelf bang. I'm like googling. I'm like, oh, no, no, <laughs> it's just a bang. Like I'm like, oh, so you just want a bang? Uh, okay, okay. Or, or fringe? You we know, like oh, like you fringe. want fringe? You know, like I'm like okay, you okay. know. But again, I'm learning again right. with, with again with social media. Back to social media in the hair world. Like right. do it yourself and tutorials and you know like mm-hmm. everyone wants to do the thing and I'm like you know the side part is like you know like a now that's deal. a question like you don't side is part it, now no, you know listen, like we, uh, Meredith and I are both still hanging on keep it keep it keep it, keep it. Yeah, keep it. <laughs> I've like, tried the center there's, part there's and I think the party down the middle is because more and more people wear wigs <laughs> so really? or extensions so it's e- a little yeah. bit easier it's easier to hide to hide correct so I've done some interesting. But again, so when you deal with a certain demographic, yep. yeah. you know, like the you gotta tween be willing. to like early 20s, like down the middle. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So you kind of like, you know, know yeah. because of those trends. Constantly but learning, paying attention, paying utilizing attention. But, social media. But we learn more from our clients, clients than yeah. anything. Than anything know, else. Like, because again, when you're in it all day long, I'm right. not at home like, oh, what's the current trend? You're like, right. I'm like, no, I need a break. You right. know? So, <laughs> so clients do a lot of homework Absolutely. for us, which is kind of yeah. cool. We've but got a couple more comments before we move Yeah, because then Can I want to get that? to some challenges. Yep, perfect. All <clears> right, so um, Katrina is joining us again. She said, so awesome to be with you. I loved learning about you and your salon, Counselor uh, Dumas. Thanks again for joining awesome. us. Thank you. Um, LaQuisha joins back in and says the salon website is gorgeous. My sister is a celebrity stylist, so I live vicariously through fancy people like you. And oh, her. Uh, let me tell you, it's called a Wix, and I Fence. did that myself. <laughs> the, the, the cleaner your website is, the yes. more sophisticated it looks. So you so. did your own website. It's so. So, but that's such business. an important part that, it's like, nice. as a business it's owner, but it's you're clean, doing yeah, everything right. Um, thankfully with tools like one. it's it, yeah, but you I, I guess I'm tooting my horn I guess it wasn't as complicated it looks no, a lot but, but cleaner just, than what it just is just my but, point is that yeah. as a small business owner it's you like it's yeah. you and your team but Correct. you guys are putting the website together you're doing the social media I mean right. you're doing all those things and that's awesome yeah and then Spencer has a <clears> question <throat> for us what is the best advice you can give to an aspiring entrepreneur which Spencer is one right right um, ask questions. There you go. So I, I, starting out, I had no hair experience, no clientele, no nothing. So every distributor and everyone that wanted to solicit my business, I was like, so let me ask you a few questions. <laughs> <laughs> so I would turn the tables just, and I never felt like I was sounding like I didn't know Silly. what I was talking about. Yeah. Because people love people sharing. People love to share. And yeah. people love to talk about themselves. Obviously, as we're True. ranting on and on about myself, you know. Right. We, we really people, struggle with it. We hate it. Correct. It's and tough. <laughs> And even so, I, and I joke about this all the time, like when you have to interact with someone and you don't know them mm-hmm. and you have to make that connection, you, literally they're going to judge you within the two, first two seconds, you yeah. know, and especially and they're trusting you with the hair because no matter what deal. you have going on in your life, they will resort back to their seventh grade haircut. And mm-hmm. it was the most traumatic thing that they've ever had in their whole entire <laughs> life. And I'm like... So we, let's move on from that. I'm sorry <laughs> that you went through that, but it's been 30 years. So right. Let's, right. So ask questions. So when we first started out, the, the new client that will come in, I'm like, let's play a fun game. And that's how we started. Like, what are you talking about? Like, it's t- called 20 questions. And I literally, that's cool. the first 20 questions that popped into my head. What color is, what's your favorite color? What do you have for breakfast? Yeah. Do you have any kids? Are you married? Like, I literally would just Get ramble on. Yeah. And then people are like, or tell me a funny story or a fun story. Like, I don't have one. I'm like, well, then what did you have for breakfast? Yeah. You know, like, then you... Yeah have like oh and like oh actually I didn't eat breakfast I'm like well why yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it opens the door for whatever conversation right. that you, you get have to and know people. people so ask questions for anyone that's in your industry you know mm-hmm. build that connection because you never know when you're going to need them or when they're going to need you yeah. you know and it, it, it's it, for me it was it was make or break you know to ask those questions because I literally had no idea what I was doing when <laughs> yeah. we first opened up well you've obviously but, done a so. good, job. good um, job I like to think I still don't know but, but I'm glad I can fake <laughs> well, it learn, so learning well. every day right? So, yeah. That's right and and I'm glad that we are you know Absolutely. because like if you're not learning you're not game. growing and, and yeah. then you're just stagnant and right yeah who wants that at right. the end of the day right. you know but President Austin had a quick question. Hi, President Austin. So glad you're joining us. We love when you join the podcast. Yes. And what ep- do you remember offhand what episode he was? Because 
That's a great episode to go back and watch. But yeah. Well, and he has like top views. Yeah, too. he does. He nice. does. Well, he's yeah. so popular. He, he does. does. He's just rightfully so. Yes. We he's, love he's, him. <laughs> yes. So um, he says Christian rocks as the Ward oh, Three counselor. Agreed. He brings energy, effort, and enthusiasm. Great job. We haven't even talked about your role as a role. city. Well, all right. So don't jump in front. Like I'm a, sorry, Jill. You're jumping ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. So before we talk about how your experience as a city councilor, because sure. yes. we are running out I of know, time, believe I know, it or not. It's crazy. I want the two things I really want to talk about challenges that you're facing right now as a small business owner. I know you mentioned kind of staffing, um, things like that. I know COVID was obviously a challenge, but any anything in particular that sticks out right now that you guys are grappling with or something that you're you're facing that people might not understand or realize? I think staffing, I think for everyone, Huge. but we, we've always had a staffing, you know, like just because mm -hmm. this sheer size of the space. So right. we've always needed staffing. So, mm -hmm. um, but I actually want to say thank you to Con President Austin Absolutely. because I will send the check for those compliments. <laughs> it's in the mail. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I'll put his comment yeah. back yeah. on the screen. Uh, yeah. Wait, yeah. Uh, wait, I, I will send it to Checks Linda because he won't cash it. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Linda will. Yeah. Um, so, so with the hair world, we've been opened forever. Yeah. You know, like we were phase one, which yes. people don't understand. And and I say yes, you never mm -hmm. stopped. We stopped for about eight months, eight weeks. Sorry, yeah. Right. So we, I, I remember the day vividly. We closed March twenty first of twenty twenty, and right. we opened up Memorial Day. So probably okay, like April right. or May. But we were literally the first mm -hmm. business to open up. Like before, right. like surgeries could open, we were. And I'm like, <laughs> well, okay, everyone but, needs to get their hair which, done, which I'm, <laughs> I'm grateful for. But, waxing um, and all that stuff needs to happen. But that, the beautiful thing, like waxing, we couldn't do. It oh, really? literally was just hair. just hair. So if you wanted a facial, wow. nails, massage, no, not nothing. They opened up like phase two step two like wow. it was literally just hair like that, that was like the a thing. bad dream like i don't even remember half of the stuff anymore and, and, it was and, changing so quickly and it's funny because when people ask that question i'm like we've been doing this for so long it feels like because we like i said we opened in may right you yeah, know? so right. we're talking well over a year and a half right. you know so but that was when you couldn't find toilet paper remember that <laughs> no, remember that so that, that's something only, i've blocked out right <laughs> it's and it's so relevant because not only do I have to convince my team to come back to work yeah. in this difficult time right but also how do I find toilet paper for my staff <laughs> for and my, my team you know for for my staff and for the clients like right, that was right. that was an issue that I had to face right. like that you never thought oh my be god facing. you know like no like who right. runs out of, like but that was my reality it was all our reality right you know? and I'm like right. oh I can I literally can't use the bathroom but I can cut your hair you know like <laughs> like the disconnect was just it was so proportional. Crazy. I was like, what is going on? Like, yeah. so an alternate but, reality. Yeah. Right. So thankfully with this shop being as large as it is, like we staggered the chairs like front and back. So rather than this way, we kind of staggered six feet. So that kind of worked. Yeah. But like, if you ever got a pedicure, like the pedicure, like liners, we put those over the chairs. Okay. So yeah. we're able just to rip them off yeah, and, and throw them away. We had um, one door in, one door out, because we had two entrances. Kind yeah. of, we have a handicap entrance and then the main entrance. So yeah. people were coming in and coming out. But the waiting in the car and this and that, phone calls, like it's just yeah. kind of. And we were busy, obviously, like the first month yeah. because everyone needed to Everybody come in. To come and then it kind of like tapered off. Yeah. And then the mm -hmm. second wave happened, and then yeah. people weren't coming, and then constant reschedule like i was exposed or this or that yeah, and, 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 that's true and that was difficult because like granted like and again i love the restaurants i think the city of marlboro did a fantastic job like supporting local restaurants but like in the hair world we work on commission you right. know and mm, myself right. included so like if there's no one in that seat you yeah, know so if money. you call me that same day oh my god i was exposed and you right. are a two-hour appointment like i now have a two-hour gap and right. i can't call anyone that quick to turn mm. around so it was a very difficult yeah and what can you do right you know there like nothing, nothing. You could do. but thankfully like i don't know how other businesses that just open did it because yeah. like we did have again 10, the, 10 the years of right. of having a client base so like we thankfully we just did a we went live with the online booking. I just set up my staff with Venmo. So we were already technology sound before yeah. COVID, thankfully. Thank goodness. Mm, yeah. And you could order gift cards online. right online. So that so we ran a promotion where That's like awesome. you got twenty percent off added to whatever gift card you did if mm -hmm. you did it at a certain time. Yeah. And the the support was just huge. Incredible, you know, and, and I'm forever indebted. Like I always say I have the best clients and i will say that and whether they believe it or not but i'm telling you like thank you because it was such a <laughs> like literally it, it carried us through, through. so in a, i'm probably tweeting my own horn, but like for the first we thought we were just going to close like everyone else for two weeks so yeah. like i took an average of the last 
six pay stubs and I paid my staff the two weeks that we were closed. So having that extra gift card income was huge because I was able to do that. And then obviously it lasted longer. So unemployment kicked in for everyone. But, um, I loved not having to work. You did know, you, were you able to so, take advantage of some of the federal we, programs? We did get a grant, stuff? so I was not able, like I was denied for every business really? loan. That I, yeah, it was, a, it was a grueling process. Mm. Like, you know, like they wanted yeah. everything. And I just don't think, we, we weren't ready. I don't think anyone was ready for it, yeah. you know. So, but I did get a grant, which was great, which helped. Good. So I was able to like, like, Keep it going. I, and I still don't know what's happening. So like, I'm just like, you know what? Thankfully, I didn't need it. Put it aside because again, yeah. we're still not through it. Right. You know, so right. I'm like, I don't know what's gonna happen. Right. Like, so now I, I think I'm being. I think we're all a little extra cautious sure. of like what what to expect and to have that kind of cushion just mm-hmm. because. And again, I think we've had this conversation where like the the state was literally handing out money literally rightfully mm-hmm. so because we needed it. But my concern is like for small businesses, and, and this is where I caution is like. That money has to be recouped oh, right. some, somehow, somehow, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And what a lot of people don't know, like if you don't offer health insurance, there was a weird um, tax for two years that w- small businesses were hammered with. Mm-hmm. So it was like a quarterly payment. Like I envision, again, I have no crystal ball, as Mike Austin will say regarding finance, where small businesses will get hit with this is <laughs> somewhere it, yeah. down the line. Mm-hmm. So right. if... And I urge small businesses, like, if you're not preparing for this now, like, yeah, start you because be. there's going to be, like, this, w- I have a feeling it's going to be, like, this weird tax that, unfortunately, small businesses have to take up. Like, right. we mm-hmm. seem to get hit the hardest yeah. mo- most of the time. So I don't know what the future is going to hold, but I'd rather prepare for it now yeah. than smart not. Advice. Yeah. Only because we have to balance the budget. Right. You know, like, that has to happen. It has to like, happen. Like, there can't be this deficit. Right. So um, things are good now. Yeah. But be prepared. Right. So don't don't take that extra vacation because things are good because mm-hmm. like it, you just don't know. Yeah. You know, and I think that was like a huge That's lesson. That's a huge like, lesson oh. that everybody learned. You never yeah. know. You never know. Right. I mean, it's incredible how one pandemic literally shut down the world. The world. Yeah. And Every person in industry was changed. Everybody, by it. yeah, absolutely. Not, and no one was untouched. For me, that's so fascinating, yeah. <laughs> but scary at the same time. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, like, but yeah. All right. So, city council, how how has your experience as a city councilor either has it changed your view of your of your small business? Has it changed the way you do business? If so, how so? If not, that's okay too. But ha- how has it affected your? Hmm. I don't know. I guess just your thoughts on how you run your business or. So in the beginning, I did have constituents come into the shop mm-hmm. <laughs> to ask questions, and then they realized like it's my That's job. That's not not appropriate. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but again, just from people always think that you have every answer, mm-hmm. you know. And and having a small business, you always want Main Street to look like Hudson and all that stuff. But as a city councilor, you hear like, why can't you do anything? And then so it's constantly explaining the same thing. Like I can't control the landlords and what they right. rent and who they rent out to. Yeah. You know, so like we as councilors can only do so much. Right. <laughs> you know, like, right. The I, city can only do so much. So I, I can't tell that landlord to stop. I mean, trust me, I would love them to stop renting to hair salons, <laughs> but there's enough for us to go around, so I'm not that bitter about it. <laughs> but, but um, no, it's a good point, though. But, I, I think people sometimes don't understand the intricacies or or the limitations of you know just because you're a city council or or in a city department that you have this magic wand that you can wave. Right, right. you know, and I think that there's, there's only a few people that own like every building on right. Main Street. So once they start selling, then I think you'll see the shift. But until then, it, and unfortunately, it's a waiting game. You know, right. we had approved a few things downtown, right. and it hasn't come to fruition for whatever Number reason. Reasons. So yeah. we are trying to do our part, and trust me, we hear that. Like we right. would love a thriving downtown, you know, right. and we know that it can work. Yeah. It's just a matter of getting the right business to landlord to actually mm-hmm. rent to the people that want it. You right. know, right. so I, I know that there's a need. I know there's a desire. I trust me, you know, pandas eat hot meat, so I get it. I think it's but. great that you're able to, to kind of get that message back out there, though. Right. And and, and explain that to some pe- people. I mean, that's that's wonderful. So. And, and once people start to, like, realize that it's yeah. just like me as a city councilor telling you to buy an electric car. Like, no, right. like you can choose whatever car. Just like if if some, if a tenant wants to move into their property, they they have a mortgage to pay. Right. You know, they are essentially a small business as well as a being a landlord. It's right. their investment. Yeah. It's their future. It's, right. You know, so for us as a city to tell you who you can rent to and who you can't, 
I'm not a fan of micromanaging from a government standpoint. Like, who am I to tell you who you mm-hmm. can rent to? You know, like, it doesn't yeah. make sense. So if their money is there, they're going to take it. Right. That's like me denying a client. Like, no, if the money is there, then I'm going to take it. You know, right. like, mm-hmm. you know, if that credit card is approved, all right, I'm so good. sit in my chair, you know, <laughs> like, let's do this. <laughs> and right. it's, it's just a different level, Absolutely. you know, and I think people forget that disconnect. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I, like you said, I can't just, no, you can't wave, you know, I mean, if we could wave the magic wand right <laughs> so many right. things and it's funny because like people are like oh you know if you whenever you win the lottery like i would literally invest in main street you yeah. know like that's always mm. been my goal and really transform yeah main street and just figure out how main street can look right because i think we all have our visions of a downtown main street you right. know but to be able to support that you know and bring it up to that hands down right what i would do it's just you heard it here first. Bio, yes. <laughs> I, I have to learn to play the lottery in order to win. <laughs> but, um, but if the shot should ever happen, like, I, and I, I we're going to hold to it. <laughs> I'll start playing. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I, it's just a smart investment. You right. know, it's just to, again, I agree. you went back to like, why Marlboro? Main Street, not the lottery. Right. Right. I need to win the lottery. It's right. A, right. I need a to, smart to, investment uh, is investing in. Main Street. Main Street. Oh, 100%. Not, not the lottery. lottery. Not the lottery. No, not the okay, lottery. Okay, I just wanted to I am not promoting that. gambling here on the MEDC. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah. a good investment. That's right. The Main Street. The Main, the main, main Street. Yeah, walking the Main, as my mom would say back in the day. So but. you brought an idea to us last year that was so awesome. And I, I think it actually came. You went to get your hair done. You yeah. came back and you looked at me and said, hey, Counselor Dumas asked me right. why Dine Local is not encompassing. And I think I literally said, I don't know. That's a great, that's idea. A great idea. You literally did. You're like, like, I don't know. We that's do a that. great idea. Yeah. yeah. So wh- how did you come up with that? Be- Again, there's no disrespect to the restaurants because I think it's Not such a great all. thing. But yeah. there was a lot of focus on restaurants, and rightfully yeah, so. Sure. But there are other small businesses that were hurting. And I think the Absolutely. idea came was like, I think a client was telling me like, well, yeah, when's the last time you went to a dry cleaner? I'm like, oh. Right. <laughs> because like people don't right. anymore. And like right. that's when it like hit like. There are so many other businesses out there that actually Could need that. Yeah. that type of advertisement that the right. restaurants mm-hmm. were getting on some level because right. it's like, oh, it's not just restaurants. It's literally every small business, you know? Well, yeah. So It was such a good idea. But, and uh, shout out to Lindsay. She ran with the idea. Right. Yeah. It has been phenomenal. So yeah. we were running the Dine Local for a couple of months. I forget how many months we did it, but right. then we shifted to Be Local, working with the chamber. Um, and for anybody that has not participated, please do. So it's a ton of small business in Marlboro, restaurants, right. your dry cleaners, your hair right. salons, your you know car, whatever, whatever right. it may be, services. Um, but you collect stickers, and right. once you go to a certain number, you get a T-shirt, or you can wait and collect eight, and then you're entered into a drawing right. um, of a gift card to one of right. the, the participating um, establishments. So awesome yeah. idea yeah and if, if you do win that gift card i would still encourage you to hold off on using that gift card because i think a small business they need that cash yeah mm-hmm. so i have a stack of gift cards that i haven't used yet That's because awesome. i'd rather give them the money now mm-hmm. and once hopefully when this is over and right. people start getting back on their feet then because that once you use that gift card the money's already gone they, right. they paid that bill huh. so right just things i wouldn't think about Yes. That's, yes. That's, that's a great so when people come with a gift card, card I'm glad side. that they're using it. But I'm like, oh, I just worked for free on right. some level. You know, right, like I'm right. obviously I'm grateful that people bought and something. Like but it's a but, good perspective. But, but that money is not there. That's it's, coming it's in to spent. pay those. Right. So yeah. if you do have gift cards, just for anyone, like every resident, you know, like yeah. just hold off a little bit longer yeah. because like now the cash is needed more so yeah. than ever, and mm. just to pay those bills. So um, that's a great. But, point. but again, if you're not in it, you don't know it. Absolutely. You know, yeah. so um, just things for people to think about and and people are still asking for charitable donations so if right. I don't have that money coming in that I can't support right. you know Anything so else. it's such a the money that comes in that I get literally goes back into the community right. you know like I was thankful enough to make a donation to the library That's awesome. but I'm able to do that because of people that come in you yeah. know so if I didn't have that base of clients then I can't support other things my local community by right. going to my favorite restaurants or, right. or whatever you know but it's, well, it's such a full circle. And well, I we are grateful that. because we wow. it was just, uh, literally it was like a light bulb moment. We're like, I, I don't know why we're not doing that. That's a great idea. Yeah. So yeah. I guess that's yeah. my plug for anybody. If you see we're doing a program or initiative and you think we could tweak it and make it better, let us know. Yeah. Um, we're all for changing things right. and making it better. So. And I think that's what's great about Marlboro. Even yeah. the people that work in Marlboro, like city employees, they're mm-hmm. the, the most hardworking 
caring yep. people. And I think that like, there's a lot of people that get a bad rap on social mm-hmm. media because like those keyboard warriors are Absolutely. relentless. But I've keyboard warriors. Yeah, That's true. A, as yeah. Being in an environment where you are exposed to that keyboard warrior mentality or to see like how negative people can get very quickly, mm-hmm. it's just nice to take a step back and realize how much the city employees do here and you yeah. will never meet people who care totally more agree. so about the city. And yeah. I, I think that's why I enjoy being a counselor because you are with a lot of like-minded people that actually enjoy what they do. living and working in this city. Right. You know, there's and a sense of pride. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And, I'm like, and there's yeah. going to be so many, there's so many things that are going on in our city that we don't know about. There's so many things to pay right. attention to right. and there's got to be tough decisions that need to be made that you think I hope this this might not be popular, but it's going to be what's best for the city. Right. Or you know what, I need to represent this voice from my ward or whatever. Right. And it's, I mean, it's tough. Yeah, it's tough. Okay, so we literally have five minutes. We've already gone way over. But yeah. We wanted to play the game. We can't let <laughs> Christian go. We're going to do a game. teasing us a little bit with the game. All right. Yeah. This right? is what this is what makes I'm I'm nervous about. <laughs> <laughs> not easy. So so it's going to be places you would. Oh. Have gone would would have have gone have gone. have or would have. I think we're doing like a, a tr- it's almost where like did a tr- you go where did you go kind of oh. theme. yeah okay where did you go right okay okay so um I don't have okay. it up on the screen so I'm just gonna read it to you sure okay all right so in Marlboro growing up in, in Marlboro yeah. okay growing up in Marlboro where would you go to ride your bike as a kid <laughs> where was your go to spot in Marlboro to ride your bike believe it or not. I rode my bike in the parking lot of the hair salon. <laughs> Did you really? Yes. So I grew up eight houses down the street. Oh, so that's cool. I literally would ride my bike down High Street up Spring Hill, the Rose Funeral parking lot. Yep. Nice. The, where the Funky Murphy's is. Yep. That, yeah. And that's where go, you rode your bike. Yes. And we would sled at John Brumbell. So you're just so destined to be I'm, here. Yes. My life is a one mile radius. <laughs> it's a one yes. mile radius. It, literally, from where <laughs> I live. We're in that city, one mile radius. I love it. We are in that. Yes, Our building yes, right here. Yes. And a fun in fact, I actually rang the John Brown Bell. Did you as really? A kid. Yes. They, Are you allowed to do that? Um, it was a, an event. <laughs> oh. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I actually picked the lock. I nod on it for a little while just to ring right? it. Yeah. So yeah. But yeah. So I would literally ride my bike in in, in this, the parking um, lot. In the parking lot. That's yeah, awesome. Where okay. I park my car now. Yeah. As a kid or teenager, where would you go to get a haircut? Where was your go-to uh, spot? Ron's Barbershop. Where was Ron's Barbershop? So Ron's actually, I don't know where he is now, but I believe he's still working. It's right on um, West Main Street where the fire was. Okay. He, he was there, mm-hmm. but he was down by the spare time shop growing okay. up, I believe. And then he moved on his own there. So okay. I would go to, and I rocked the bowl cut <laughs> for years. Oh, we're going to need you to for share. Year. No, we will not share. Fringe? Not, not right the, now. What was we're the word for bangs? That. Fringe, yeah. Fringe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fringe. But it was like, all the way around. Spencer said, <laughs> no, I went no. there too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good old Ron's, yeah. Place to be. Yeah, he, 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 he was a worker. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, All right, course. where was your go-to spot after school? School gets out. I ran. Hang out? I I was a I was the worst runner. I came in dead <laughs> dead last indoor like outdoor country? cross country. Yeah, dead last. I was the one with. But the, you still did it. I st- I was the one with the heart. <laughs> That's yes. important. Yes, and then I worked. So my first job, I had a paper out, Marlboro Enterprise, and way back, and then I worked at um, Trimbetta's oh, for cool. like seven years scooping ice cream. So nice. I'd, I would always I always worked. The M M&M and M yeah. ice cream at Trimbetta's. I think I've talked about right. this before. Is like my kryptonite. Oh my. Their coconut is mine. Coconut so with a little hot good. fudge. Yeah. Like mm. yeah, you can't beat it. Can't beat, yeah. All right, but. Spencer also is letting us know. That the barber is at Ned's behind Ned, D'Angelo. That's, oh. I did know that. Thank, you, Thank you, Spencer. Thank you, Spencer. Yes. Yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah. That's All right, awesome. we got a few more here. Um, where did you go to spend your allowance, if you got any? If you were that, <laughs> if you were lucky enough if to I get was any. Lucky enough. I don't know that I got allowance. Yeah, I think I was always a saver. Yeah, yeah I don't. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. That's awesome. That's a so, great. You that is actually, a great answer. So, I went to high school class trip i went to italy germany and austria That's so in awesome. order for me to go you had to save all your pennies. i had to pay for it wow so that's probably where it went in my junior year yeah smart yeah. he's yeah. a smart businessman no <laughs> yeah, even no. back then i actually didn't have any friends either so <laughs> I, I had nowhere to go because i had no friends Travel. which is why i always worked or or came in dead last there you go so <laughs> there, Perfect. Yeah, there's that <laughs> all right um fast two one quick one and then one also a quick one. All right, um, where did you go to grab a gallon, gallon of milk? 
Um, so it was actually Cumberland Farms, Cumbies. which is now the Marlboro Market. Yeah, so okay. we were able to, just to walk down Brown Street and, and cross the street. <laughs> you ride your so. bike there, right? Uh, we walked, just yeah, walk. just because like that. Riding that, a bike and holding a gun. Yeah, right and out that intersection there. was kind of dangerous. So like okay, we did okay. yeah, yeah. And, and walking up that, riding up that hill. Oh, not yeah, 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 no, that's a, that's a walk. Yeah, that was <laughs> a, definitely a walk. Finally, where would you go on the weekend? Now I'm guessing you're like just counting your, your savings. <laughs> no, I spent it all in Italy. It. Yeah, no, I spent it all, yeah. <laughs> so on the weekends, what do you like to do to spend your time? Like, you were working, right? I was working, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, so the trombetta is we did birthday parties. It was like nonstop oh, cool. craziness. Oh, so like yeah. every hour on the hour was a new birthday party. So I wow. was always... I was hanging out with the trombetta. So you've always been in this mindset yeah. of hustle and get it done. And service industry. Yeah. yeah. So I, and I will shout out to the trombettas because I think they instilled the customer service aspect Which from a very so early age. You know, I think you, you always either have it or you don't. But yeah. to to embrace it and see a business, small business actually work. You yeah. Know, yeah. From Tony making the ice cream right behind us right. to the birthday parties to, you know, like calling the pizza down the street from Post Road. You right. know, like, yeah. So it kind of cultivated from a very early age that like, hey, small business is kind of where it is and to support other, other small, small business. businesses. And That's awesome. I mean, we're, they were always so the busy, crazy, and rightfully so. I mean, yeah. the ice cream is fantastic. Yeah. But, but I love yeah. it. That's it? That's it. No embarrassing we, photos, no nothing. Wow. No. They got out easy. Pretty, Do you want us yeah. to find sure some and add um, them in? If I'm welcomed back in, in, a, in a year or so, we can go down <laughs> that road. We're going to need that bowl cut. Yeah. I, well, I think, we're that didn't cut. we find President Ossing's picture after and we added yes. it in? We'll do that. Oh, we we'll integrated that. his yearbook picture. So yeah. with that, we're closing, which I'm really sad. This has been a really fun episode. We went way over our I, normal I, my time. My apologies for that. No, no, we've been no, having no. so much fun chatting no. with you. Um, and hopefully, we'll keep a tally. You might be able to beat President Ossing oh. on the views. I, 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 we're not competitive yeah, at all around here. That doesn't matter to me. He deserves that top <laughs> spot yeah but i'm gonna share it a million times just perfect no. yeah, i'm not gonna but you're going down president. Going down. <laughs> i love it christian thank you for joining no, us today. thank this you for having a lot me. of it's fun and thank yeah. you all for joining us again for episode 16 we look yes. forward to seeing you sweet 16 two weeks yes yeah, sweet 16 episode sweet 16. for eed with medc and we look forward to seeing you in two weeks on wednesday at 10 a.m so thank you for joining us have a wonderful day